Digikey and Adafruit present. This week's Ion MPI is an NXP product. Lady Ada, what is the new product? Okay. From DigiKey this, this one week. It's definitely giving an eye on the I and MPI. Really? It is the new. Is it the bag of eyes? It's a bag of eyes. <laughs> Yay. Uh, it's, an, it's the NXP SLN Viznas IoT. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly. It's a um, edge machine learning uh, face recognition hardware that uh, runs, again, completely on the edge. It runs on a microcontroller. It uses the um, NXP RT 10.6X series, which if you're like, hey, that sounds familiar, it's because uh, it's also used in the TNC4. It's a very similar chip. It's the same hardware, but this one is licensed to use, I guess, this um, machine learning build that does machine learning for face recognition. It does a nice, fast job of it. It's very um, effective and uh, precise. And it does not require a full Linux build. It doesn't require the internet. Um, and because it's a microcontroller, it can go into deep sleep mode. So it's perfect when you want to do face recognition, but you don't want to depend on the internet or if you need to be able to go into low power mode because it maybe runs on a battery or maybe it just shouldn't, it doesn't, uh, it shouldn't have to depend on power. So for example, if you're doing a, uh, a door entry system and um, you know you don't want people to get locked out because there's no power. If the power goes out, they should still be able to get in and out. Uh, this could run on battery backup power, something that a Linux computer would not be able to do nearly as easily. So let's take a look at the dev board. So the um, chip itself is on the back. I'll show that in a second, but this is the dev board you get. And um, it's got USB-C, it's got a couple buttons in the center, a PIR sensor, that's the white thing, and then um, two uh, cameras on the right. And let's look at this in more detail. So um, there's the front and the back and they kind of plug together. So on the left-hand side is the microcontroller. So the microcontroller is again that uh, um, RT10X series. Um, it's got hyper flash memory. Memory for this chip is stored on flash. I don't think it has internal flash memory, or if it does, it needs more to run this code. SD RAM, so you have plenty of memory. You're gonna need a lot of memory to do um, any kind of visual recognition because you have to get so much visual data and analyze it. There's an SWD port, uh, there's mono output. Uh, the example I don't think uses it, but if you want to reprogram the code and add audio output, of course you get that. There's also PDM uh, microphones, so you can also add in some voice recognition if you need. A PIR sensor, the dev board has four buttons, which are used in the example code. Um, there's a boot mode, so if you want to reprogram it with the built-in bootloader. Uh, lithium ion battery, so you can power it off of uh, battery power. And um, not completely indicated here, but you see those um, FPC connectors. There is an external TFT display that you can plug in sold separately. And there's a USB-C connector on the bottom. Great, so if you take that USB-C and you plug it in, this shows up as a COM port and a camera. It was neat. Like it actually shows up as a device um, because it's a microcontroller and it can do stuff like that. You don't have to deal with like gadget mode with Linux. It just shows up as like literally a camera. So you open up your camera software, like in this case, I'm running like a Microsoft camera or something, and it comes up and it has something like this. It has the visual output of what it's seeing. Um, there's like a sort of a blue square in the center telling you this is what it's looking at for the, the face recognition area. I turn on the debug, so there's that text overlay that tells you like what the output of the various uh, processing stages are. Um, on the bottom, it tells you what the application is, and this is the uh, electronic lock application where you know, if it recognizes a face, it unlocks something. Um, there's at the bottom, you can barely see it, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. There's also a Bluetooth and Wi-Fi chip on there uh, that you can use for you know, Wi-Fi or wireless connectivity. Um, again, the default example, it doesn't do anything, but you, the hardware is there for your use. Um, when you press a button, it will, on the board, it's neat, it, it's all in one it will register your face. So it says, okay, registering, and then you kind of have to shift your face around a little bit so it gets all these angles of your face. And then it says, okay, you have been added. It knows who you are. And then you can save that to memory if you want for um, long-term use. And you can save, the number of faces you can save is a couple hundred or, or to a thousand. It depends on how precise you want it to be. I think it's probably a memory or storage or just search speed. Thing. It's like the faster you want it to go, the less faces it has to be able to look through. So if you only have like, a, you know, 100 faces it has to recognize, 
um, you can use a slightly stricter model than if you're having to measure a thousand faces. They do have a, a program that can let you do a thousand, but again, you know, it doesn't, it's not as, as strict. So you, you have to make that uh, decision. Um, in the data sheet, they talk about these, these choices. Um, once it recognizes you later, it can, you can save it as a name. You can say this is the person's name, or you can just say user number one, and then this sort of over thing, overlay thing comes up and says welcome home and uh, makes it so you can't see anything else. Um, so that's the, the basic demo. So it, it works quite well. Um, I tested it and like I kind of like, you know, put my hair up, put my hair down. I tried like wearing a hat. I tried different lighting and did a pretty good job. One thing that's interesting is that uh, when you press a button, it goes into um, infrared mode. So it does have two cameras and I, from looking at it, it, you know, when one of them has a slightly different lens than the other, I believe that one of them is IR and one of them is RGB. And so it has exterioscopic vision. But one of the nice side effects is um, it's kind of like an anti-spoofing technology. So one of the problems with these simple non-depth based um, camera face detectors is that you can often trick them by taking a photo of a person and holding up that photo and the camera is like, ding dong, you know, the person. OK, that's them. I, uh, I agree. Um, but when you have IR and I think if you have these two cameras that are offset a little bit, that probably helps, too. Um, when you hold up a picture of a person, um, in color and then in IR, um, it, it doesn't look right. You know what I mean? Like the, the flatness, the infrared doesn't come out the way it should on a human face because the background and the image is flat. Um, and the, the, it's not like depth detection, but like humans radiate a different infrared pattern on their faces than a photo does. And so um, when you open up the serial console, it's cool. It says IR fake face. It says, like, I detected a face, but uh, it did not pass my fake face test. So it, um, it will not get tricked by a piece of paper or a, a TFT with a face on it, which is, you know, kind of handy. Uh, I think that, that was a, a nice, you know, it's always a little embarrassing when you see folks, like, do, like, security analyses of, like, like lock picks or, you know, face recognition or fingerprint, and it's like, Wow, you could trick it with like a piece of Jello. That's like yeah. so terrible. Here's a picture of Jello. Here's a picture of Jello, <laughs> and it's like, hi, welcome home. Okay, but it doesn't have that problem. Um, so here's the algorithm. Um, so it can use uh, deep sleep mode, which I thought was really uh, useful. Um, one of the um, nice things about microcontrollers is, um, you know, Linux is more powerful. Of course, there's there's face recognition software and OpenCV and all that good stuff, but like. Suddenly you're running something that's going to draw about an amp. Uh, you need, uh, you know, a lot of uh, complex software to run it. To boot it up takes a long time. There's a chance of file system corruption. What's nice about these um, standalone microcontroller dev board versions of face recognition is, one, you don't have to worry about your data going to the cloud or some, somebody hacking into your firmware just because, like, there's a, you know, a backdoor password. Um, but it also can use something like the built-in PIR sensor it doesn't start doing the face recognition or recording any video until somebody is in front of it, which is like a kind of obvious thing. But because the microcontroller can wake up within like 100 milliseconds of the PIR sensor, to a human, it's nearly instantaneous. Like they don't notice the difference because it happens so fast. Whereas if it was a Linux board, it would be like, oh, hey, wait, I got to boot up. Hold on, like F disk, got to check out like all my sound cards, whatever. A minute later, you're maybe booted. So, um, fast wake up, you know, low power usage. That's why you'd want to use this instead of OpenCV. Okay, um, so they've got a nice web page that I checked out. It's got all of the details. It was super quick to get started. So the this board itself is the um, the SLN Viznas IoT. So this is the dev board, and it's ready to go. It has everything you need to do, like your project or product you can design with it. And then, of course, you can buy the individual chip as well. So just watch out. Like, I'm, we're talking about the dev board, but they also sell the chip. And the chip is like $7. It comes with the license and software and everything for this. It's a BGA chip. NXP will help you with getting it integrated into your product. But I would get the dev kit because, well, first off, you could probably just use this as is. It's a great edge, you know, facial detection system. And um, they have uh, the code. You just need, like, a JLink programmer to program it. You program it up with uh, NXP, uh, L NXP Expresso, I think is the name of the IDE. 
Um, but it's all open source and available, like the, the source code for the demo, so you can hack and mod it. And of course, like I said, there's a TFT screen as well. Okay. okay. Available so, on DigiKey's site. Pick it up. For the folks who want to know the link, you can go to digikey.com forward slash short forward slash 475v94. Or you could probably just search for what? Uh, Viznas, honestly, the V-I-Z-N-A-S. <laughs> nothing, else, nothing else is named that. Um, and then if you want to check out, there's a, we're going to show a video. There's a bunch of videos also on the NXP site showing the different things. There's also a couple other details I wanted to mention real fast. Um, it also has an emotion engine um, that, you can, you, that you can turn on that will detect like happiness or surprise or anger. I, I don't know how useful that is unless maybe you wanted to know if someone was angry at your door and you wouldn't let them in. I, I don't know, but it does have that capability. Um, there's a command line interface that you can go and you can like turn on like debugging and interface. Get happy control. before you come in. It's kind of like wiping off your feet now. Yeah, maybe. Come in with a smile on your face. All right, do you want me to show this on the overhead real fast? Yeah, we'll show it on the more? overhead and then we're going to play a video from Oop. NXP. Yeah, show the video on how you, you get it registered. So this is the dev board. Um, so this is the camera interface and you can see there's two white LEDs. So you can turn on the LEDs to illuminate somebody's face. Uh, and then there's two IR LEDs here. And the two cameras, and like you can kind of see one has a slightly different filter on the lens, I think. So one of these, this is probably the one with the IR cut filter, and maybe this one isn't, or I don't know. Um, and then this is like a like a milled out piece of plastic. This is the PIR sensor, USB, four buttons. Uh, this is probably where you would connect the uh, TFT if you wanted, and maybe some external hardware here. Um, this is the dev board module, which I think is just adorable. This is the uh, IMX RT106F. F is probably for face. Windbond flash, or yeah, ISSI uh, RAM. This is the uh, BLE and Wi Fi chipset, probably SDIO. And then it goes to this like antenna, which is on the back here. So you can do Bluetooth or Wi Fi control. And then this plugs in. I didn't unplug it because I didn't want to break it, but yeah, they got all the passes on the back. Big power supply inductors, maybe a PMIC and some other just management chips, more power supply stuff. Um, and then, yeah, this, so this is the this is the microcontroller board and Wi-Fi, so this is like kind of cute and nice. Plugs into the user interface board, and then this is the camera board, which is really stuck in there but it looks like this so this is what you've got here i like this dual camera this is kind of a cool cool little thing i've never seen before but there you go so these three pieces and they plug into this uh milled uh resin um package okay so let's uh let's watch this video showing yeah. the process of registering and identifying names hi I'm Cooper Carnahan, a solutions integrator here at NXP, and today I'm going to be showing you how to get up and running with your SLN Vision AS IoT kit. When you first receive your kit, you'll find three things inside. A quick start guide, a USB-C cable, and most importantly, your SLN Vision AS IoT kit. To begin, take the included USB-A to USB-C cable and plug the USB-A end into your computer's USB port and the USB-C end into the USB-C port on your kit. The USB port on your kit provides power to the board, drag and drop flashing via MSD, and virtual serial port capabilities. With the cable plugged in, a green LED will light up to indicate the kit is receiving power. Once the application is running, your computer will automatically discover the kit is both a comm device and USB webcam, and your computer may make a sound indicating it has detected a new USB device. Next. Open the camera app if using Windows, or Cheese if using Ubuntu, to view the camera output coming from the kit. If you have multiple cameras attached to your computer, you may have to switch to the SLN Vision AS IoT camera to see anything coming from the kit. Right off the bat, you'll notice the built-in GUI provides some convenient on-screen information, including a bounding box to help users properly align and center their faces while registering, the on-off status of both the Wi-Fi and BLE capabilities of the kit, and the total number of users registered in the kit's local face database. Press the switch for push button on the front of the kit to begin registering a new face. An on-screen message at the top of the screen will be displayed to indicate that registration is taking place. 
Simply hold your face in front of the camera, making sure to center your face within the provided guidelines. Upon successful registration, a message will be displayed indicating a new user has been added to the kit's local face database and the number of registered users will be increased by one. If registration fails, simply press the registration button again to retry. Once registered, your face will prompt a welcome home message whenever your face is recognized. Registered faces will continue to be recognized until the kit is powered off or the face is manually removed, although saving faces permanently can be done using the CLI or by enabling low power mode. Both of these features will be discussed in more depth in later videos. This concludes our look at powering on and registering a face with the SLN Vision AS IoT kit. Check out the next video in our series to learn how to test out the liveness detection and anti-spoofing features of the kit. Okay, watch um, all the videos because there's yeah, more videos when we show you the first one. This week's IonMPI, check it out on DigiKey. That's right. Hi, IonMPI.